All right, welcome back. This is episode eight, converting a uh, free wing cougar to a turbine. This is gonna be the last episode. I'm not gonna get in great detail with this because it's gonna be installing the equipment up front and everybody's got their own equipment and own techniques. So I'm gonna let you guys run with it. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna say again, I am not sponsored by anybody, nor do I wanna be. Um, I'm just gonna give you my general feedback on some stuff and it, take it for what it is. Um, I mentioned the very first one, I had an incident with uh, one of the Cougars, had to send the engine in because it had some damage. Um, I thought I'd show you an email that uh, I got back from, this is the man, Gaspar, and uh, he doesn't communicate much and when he does, you need to pay attention. Um, so I was, I was pretty surprised at what he said and uh, you know, once again, I'm not a sponsor of anybody, but in that particular engine that he's talking about, from day one, I have used the uh, Power Master, or Power Model Jet Oil exclusively in that engine. And uh, it had more hours on it than I thought it did. I had no idea what it had on it when I sent it in. And uh, he replied back that it was in pretty good shape. Uh, so I'm just gonna tell you what I do I run 23 ounces of this oil per five gallons of Jet A. And I mean, it's before I was always sending engines in with clogged nozzles and stuff. And, you know, I don't know if this is the miracle cure, but it works really good for me and I fly a lot. Um, so that's my two cents worth on that. Cause uh, man, the engines have been running great, you know, normal wear and tear, but um, I'm pretty happy with the overall performance of them. Um, let's get back to the, uh, the Cougar here. Um, this one right here, it's pretty much ready to go to this customer. Uh, this is the way I deliver it. I got the, the pump mount in. I got the vent in right here, and that hooks right to there. I tell them to leave this disconnected until they get the receiver hooked up here. It's a lot easier to get it in. Uh, the vent line runs right over it, and uh, everything works good. Um, I'm mounting the UATs without the cradle because a lot of you guys bellyache that it's, it's too hard to make the fiberglass cradle. Uh, it is where it is. Um, so I'm just uh, putting the Velcro around it, and we're bonding the Velcro right to the model on the bottom and the side. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty solid. Um, if you ever got to get that out, you know, you might pull a little foam with it, but normally you, you don't have to get the, uh, the UAT out. Um, other than that, the, uh, the tank bonded in real nice. I was real happy with that. Everything looks good. Um, I don't uh, fasten in the tailpipe with the standoffs to after the vertical's on, and the uh, heat shield is around the, um, uh, the vertical. Uh, once again, though, the standoffs, they're just pretty much, you know, a piece of scrap, eighth-inch plywood bonded to the tailpipe with CA, and that allows you to uh, slide the tailpipe aft when you uh, need to install the engine. Um, it just makes life a lot easier. Uh, so we're going to do a few little steps to this one. I'm not going to get in great detail because... Everybody's got their own equipment. Everybody likes to do it their own special way. Um, the first thing I do is I, I cut off these rails here back here. Uh, you don't need this wood, and the wood's in the way of the UAT, so I'm going to pop that out real quick. And to do that, I just take a, um, it's like a Dremel rotary cutter there, and uh, just zips it right out. And they just pretty much fall right out then. I'm not going to worry about the dust. Um, I give this piece to you. as It's, it's a solid piece. And uh, I decided I'm going to cut a notch around it because 
if you look at this servo here, it sticks up just like a, a 30 second above uh, the plane of this piece here. And I don't want to, you know, preload anything. And uh, cutting the little notch in there, it, it lets the wires come out. And uh, I mean, it fits in there really nice. And it's also a way to get the, uh, the brake wire out on the nose gear. You can bring it up right through this thing and run it to your controller. Um, I'm not going to get into great detail on the uh, mount in the UAT. Um, you know, it's pretty much, uh, you're going to remove some foam. Let's look at this one over here. You're going to remove some foam so that it's... Um, even with this plane right here about and the bottom of the UAT is uh, on the, the front cap it's about even with the uh, the plywood plate right here and then the plywood plate it's just held down with four screws I mean nothing fancy or anything and uh, just just whittle away at the foam um, if you look down here in the back you want a little don't have the uh, UAT right up against the uh, fuel tank fitting there or um, you know could cause some rubbing issues so uh, just you know have your 25 degree slant or so you did, don't mount them level you always want that air pocket to be mounted at the top here and uh, once you got it uh, the foam uh, carved away I just hot glue this and this down to the foam and um, it works really well uh, this is your fill line here this is the uh, line going up to the uh, pump, and then the other fitting as far as the, uh, uh, the line coming out of the clunk on the tank. And I just, you know, fold it around like that. Nice relaxed uh, uh, loop here. I mean, it works out really well. Um, other than that, and then once you get the uh, UAT in, you can uh, work with the receiver shelf. Um, the one I give you, you know, once again, everybody's got their own type of equipment, okay? So the one I give you is like this. And this works out really good for my equipment. Um, I mount it with some, uh, I cut some uh, scrap. They're 9 16 inch uh, plywood like spacers that go here. I bond them down. The uh, shelf fits right on top of that glues up against the side of the fuselage there. Uh, once again, you know, roughen up everything so that the glue um, takes a good bite. Um, for you guys that are have to run the blue box and all that, um, I recommend, I'm going to get this out of the way here to show you. I recommend mounting the blue box right on center line like that, okay? because the cables are just, long, the ribbon wires are just long enough to get from here with a little bit of slack on it, up through the model into the uh, connector there. So um, I'm gonna give a temp, you know, I'm not gonna supply it because I don't know what everybody's running, but if I was running the blue box and a spectrum receiver, which I'd rather take up stamp collecting as a hobby, um, I would rat, I would use a um, a shelf like this. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. So you do do some uh, scrap plywood spacers, something like this right there, and um, a longer one over here. And once again, have your UAT in there first. Then you. Bond on, I'll, I'll include a, uh, a template for this thing. So, you know, I'm not gonna set one up for that because, you know, my customers are using Jetty and it works out really good for us. But, you know, use the, uh, use your uh, blue box right here, right like that. Then you've got all this real estate over here for whatever type of uh, spectrum receiver or whatever you wanna run, okay. And then this real estate over here is for the UAT. Um, I think that's gonna work out best for you. 
And then as far as, um, since the tank is already in, I recommend beating up the uh, wires for the gear first. They're the hardest ones to get to. And the way I do that, hold on one second. It, you know, it, it can be tough to get to, but the uh, the gear wires are the hardest ones to get to. So what I do is I, I fish up a uh, piece of uh, like heat shrink tubing. <clears throat> I should have had this all ready to go. But trust me, it works. So you, you just feed that through the opening there. Watch for it to poke out up top, which you'll, you'll see it eventually. I really need a smaller piece. Um, well, anyways, but the, the gear wires are the hardest to get to, okay? After you get to the gear wires, these things are, are real simple. They come right up through the top, okay? it up there so just grab it with a pair of hemostats tie or fasten your ribbon wire to it and then it'll come right up here but do the gear wires first because they're the hardest and then once the model is complete and you ever got to pull a gear out make sure you tie like a, uh, a, a piece of fishing line or something to that or you're never going to get that gear wire up through here with all the wires on uh, in the model already there um, so, and then the, uh, the wires for the, uh, elevator and all that back here, they, you know, they're pretty much straightforward. They, they run, you know, straight up through right there like that. Put your light back in and, uh, fish the, uh, wires or the, uh, the wires for the turbine the same way and the fuel line for the turbine the same way. Other than that, um, you know, once again, everybody's got their own way of doing stuff. This is what I like to use for a vent, um, you know, just some silver soldered um, brass tubing put together. I I like to do mine uh, right here, okay? If you guys are running a, a shelf like this, you may want to do it up in this neighborhood. It, it all depends what you want to do. And everybody's got their own preference for a, a, a vent. This works out really good for me, super simple. Then for the pump mount, this is what I do. I mean, it's it's really simple. That gets bonded down to here. The pump um, bolts to this little piece of plywood here, and then this piece of plywood screws to that little standoff. I just put that right here. And as far as the batteries go, um, I like to run the uh, these batteries here. This is my go-to battery. I buy these off of Amazon, 2000, two cell, phantom lipo. Uh, they just pretty much sit up in front of the model. And uh, I run three because I run Unilights, but um, you know, it's, it's whatever your preference is. They just pretty much lay up in there. I haven't had any issues at all. A lot of times you gotta extend the wires just a little bit. Um, see, I have like, um, I splice one of the wires and add extensions so you got some slack to work with. The same thing on the uh, the balance leads because I, I just leave the, the batteries in the model while, I, um, while I'm charging. Other than that, um, I think that's about it. Model fly is pretty good. Um, I think you'll be happy with it. Um, it it's fast. It, it'll get away from you in a hurry because it's pretty small, so pay attention. Um, that's why I like the Unilights. It's just so much easier to see the things, you know, when they're going away and coming at you. Um, and then as far as the BEC goes, a lot of guys, I get this question all the time. Why do I need a BEC? you got to remember, these models are designed for the BEC on the speed controller of the, for the ducted fan, okay? 
These models are designed to run on about five to five and a half volts. They're happiest at 5.2. If you get them up to 5.5 and above, the gear is not happy at all. I recommend 5.2. If you buy them from me, I have them, pre and you tell me you want them for the cooler, I have them pre-programmed to run at 5.2 volts because you can program these to run at any voltage and you can pretty much run them on any pack. If you want to run them on a six cell LiPo, you can. I mean, it's a, it's a neat little unit that the uh, voltage can be regulated to what you want. But you, if you want to run a two cell LiPo on these things, you've got to have a BC. It doesn't have to be a castle and be any brand that you want, but you've got to regulate it down. You have to, okay? Other than that, and then as far as the brake controller goes, um, the, if you buy the brakes from me, I, I include a, a stock um, JP controller. They work fine. Or you can run, my favorite in this model is, a, uh, is the little um, brake controller from Zycor, okay? These things, these things, they work really good. They like pulse it like anti-lock brakes and it, it keeps the uh, wheel from locking up. I mean, it's, it's a neat little unit. You know, or you can run the AG63 too if you want, but you know, you really don't need a steering gyro with um, one brake. You know, one, the AG63 really works out good if you have a brake on each main and one's not braking as hard as the other, it keeps the model straight and you don't have that issue with this one. So I recommend just sticking with the um, the stock JP, or you can you know run the um, the Zykoi controller. Uh, this is this is what I recommend. Other than that, I, I think I've pretty much covered everything. The hatch fits fine. This is like the first uh, conversion I've done where you don't have to carve the hatch up or anything. Everything fits in really nice. Um, just try to be organized up front. Everything, I mean, there, there's plenty of room in the model. I mean, it look, you, you got to have room for all these cables and stuff. But, I mean, there's just, there's gobs of room down there. Um, just be neat with your wiring and you'll be fine. And once again, you know, there's a lot of wiring coming out of the top. So, um, you know, plan in accordance as you're doing it that you can uh, manage everything and, and be neat with it. You know, I got the uh, stock or the Castle BC nestled over here out of the way. I mean, you never have to get to that stuff. And the uh, the brake controllers over here, you really don't have to get to it. So just shove it out of the way and uh, keep it nice and neat. Okay, and then I run um, this shelf's a little bit shorter than what I'm supplying now. But, you know, you just fasten up the uh, wires to keep them out of the way of the nose gear and uh, you should be fine. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this series, uh, and hopefully you learned something, even if you're not doing the cougar. Uh, but these things are a lot of fun to do, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're the best bang for the buck. Thanks for watching.